First and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongs to Yahweh by Sham Yahabashai Bahasham Bahavakar Kwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Son's name is Yahabashai, and who I reverence and honours to the elder apostles of Great Milson that taught me this truth and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. There's importance to the image of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. There's importance to it. Okay? Because our people have very, very um low self esteem. Okay. So it's important to know what? The image of the Messiah. Right? Because not everybody knows it. And these are what bread and butter scriptures, but we have to go over these scriptures again and again and again. We're going to start from Revelation. It's the revelation of Yahweh Mashiach. Okay, and when you go into that word revelation, to reveal, disclose, divulge, to make known by divine agency. Okay, of truth from Latin revelare, reveal, uncover, disclose, to unveil. Okay. To display. So we're displaying what? The image of Yahweh Yahushai. Which the Most High gave unto him to show unto his servants. Things which must shortly come to pass. And it says, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Okay, so he signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Because angels are also what? Messengers. So the angels, they're also used as what? Messengers to work on what? The minds of the hopeful elect. Right? To give them what? Revelations and so forth. And it says, who bear record? Of the word of the Most High. What's a record? A testimony. Okay. And of the testimony of. Yahabashai Mashiach. So the men of the Lord. They would have the testimony. Of Yahabashai. And of all the things he saw. Bear me just a minute. You know what? I should have had this prepared. I keep doing that. Because you've got a lot of our people that say. Oh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what colour he is. He could be any colour. No, it does matter. It does matter. Right? Because if it didn't matter, then Esau wouldn't change the image of our Lord. You have a shine. Talking about it don't matter. It don't matter to you. Okay? Give me just a minute. There we go. So it says, Blessed is he that readeth and hear, hear the words of this prophecy. Go into that word readeth and see what comes up. Strong's G314. Anigonosko. An Anigonosko. Anigonosko. And when you go into it, it says to distinguish between, to recognize, to know accurately. So we have to know. We have to know. How can you say, all right, I have a Lord and Savior, but you don't know his name, you don't know anything about him? Okay, that's like having an imaginary friend, but you know nothing about him. You don't know his name, you don't know how he how he looks. To know, to accurately, to acknowledge, to read. Okay, to recognize, to distinguish. That's why the scripture says, with all thy wisdom, get understanding. So blessed is he that readeth, because you have many people in the churches, they read the scriptures. But you ask them about this particular scripture... Oh, you know the Messiah was, he was a dark-skinned man from the tribe of Judah. They say, no, we didn't know that. But they've been in the churches for what, 15, some 20, 30 years and they never knew that. So what was the pastors teaching them all that, all that time? That's why it says, blessed is he that readeth, comprehends. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. Okay, and this is prophecy. And keep those things which are written. Okay, and these things were written what for our learning for the time is at hand. Jump straight to 
where was it where was it where was it starts jump straight to verse 8 and it says I am the Alpha and Omega okay and that's what the first and the ending okay from Adam to Yahavashai okay and the Alpha and the Omega this is the beginning and the ending all right give me just a minute it's the beginning and the ending save the lord you have a shy which is okay the lord and savior and which was who was crucified by our own people the wicked of our people and which is to come because he's on the right hand side of the heavenly father the almighty and i john who also am your brother and companion in tribulation because back then two thousand years ago the prophets were suffering for the testimony of Yahweh Shai. And it says, and in the kingdom of patience of Yahweh Shai. It was in the isle that is called Patmos. Bear me just a minute. That's where John the Revelator had the vision on the island of Patmos. Mm -mm. Patmos was an island on the, what's it? The isla in Mediterranean, a rugged and bare island in the Aegean Sea, right? For the word of the Most High and for the testimony of Yahweh Shai Masha, because he had the testimony of Yahweh Shai, okay? And back then it was a crime, okay, to preach Yahweh Shai, okay? It'd be seen as what, what's, what's the word, what's the word? Betrayal of what? The Romans. There's another word for it. Okay. And I was in the spirit. That's why this is not a joke. Being a prophet. It's not an easy thing. And I was in the spirit on the Lord. Yahabashah's day. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Saying I am the Alpha. And Omega. Right. The first and the last. And what I see is right in the book. And that's why. We're able to what? To give you the revelation of what's being written now because it was being written in a book so John he was a prophet and he was also what a scribe that's what scribes do write things down what they saw and it says send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus Bear me just a minute that's what the prophet Sunday write down what they saw and these things were sent unto the churches. I mean, it's talking about Asia. This was um, Mysia, Lydia. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Phygaria and Korea, which was basically closely to Turkey today. Okay, that was that region of what Asia. Okay, and different churches. And Ephesus. And unto Smyrna, Pergamos, Titra, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. So these letters went to different churches across the globe. Okay. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven, seven golden candlesticks. Okay. One. And one, baby, just minute. And in the midst of seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the sun. Of man, fell with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. For this description of Yahavashai, clothed down with a garment, and that's our apparel. That's what we used to wear, garments. Down, right down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Okay, and a girdle would be like unto what? A belt that you would wrap around what? Your garment. Because a lot of the times our garments blow. Okay, so you'd wrap what the belt around it. Okay, a belt serving not only to good, only flowing garments. See, that's a spit, but also since it was huddle to carry money in. You could also carry money in it as well. But give me just a minute. Yes, a belt. Okay. And you could also um, fit particular victuals in there as well. Give me just a minute. You could tuck your sword into that as well. 
And what else? I just got to put the disclaimer. When I said that as well, we're not, we don't carry swords. We don't carry weapons. I just got to throw that out there. Okay, we're a spiritual, we're a spiritual group. And it says, and his head, the main point, right? And his head. So this is going to the description of how he looked. And his hairs were white, like wool. So Yahushua had white, woolly hair. Okay, as white as snow. Okay, that's an afro. Okay. And his eyes were as the flame of fire. Right, and we can back this up. Let's quickly go into Genesis. See if I can find it. Genesis 49 and 12. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk that's the description of Yahabashai okay and when you drink a lot of wine our people drink a lot of wine the whites of their eyes go red and his teeth white with milk so now let's go back to revelations it's important that we go to the basics very important revelations 1 and so we're done with 14 and his feet are like unto fine brass and some when you ask people what color is brass some would say Goldy, yeah, it's kind of goldy, goldily color. Yes, but when you burn it, what does it turn as if they burned in a furnace? That would be what dark, okay? So, you have I was what a dark skinned man from the tribe of Judah, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Remember, he taught with authority, he wasn't teaching the scripture, says he didn't teach us the what's it, the scribes and the Pharisees. He taught with authority, and he had in his right hand seven stars. Which represent the angels. Okay, that minister unto him. Bear me just a minute. Let's see if I can find that. Let's see if we can find it. Right on the page, Psalm 68 and 17. And the chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord Jehovah is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place right so again the angels they minister to the heavenly father yahweh and yahweh shai go back to where we were and it says and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword which is the word and his countenance was the sun trying to finish strength let's quickly get that and why did it say out of his mouth went a two-edged sword does that mean the sword was coming out of coming out of Yahushua's mouth? No. Nope. Quickly go to Hebrews 4 and 12. And this is the basics. So if you've got a pen and notepad, write this down. Shouldn't just be watching for entertainment. Let's go to Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of the Most is quick and powerful. Straight to the point. Why do you think you had the wicked of our people that were always against Yahushua? Because this word is quick. And it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And this was the sword that was coming out of Yahweh's mouth. The word. He was that sword, basically. Okay. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing and dividing. Okay, bear me just a minute. So important to go into these scriptures. A lot of the times we can um, tend to forget about the basics, but the basics keeps us what leveled. All right. Yes, dividing asunder. So when you're dividing something, you're splitting it into partition. Okay, and that's why some people they hear this word and they're never the same again. Never, never the same again. Dividing asunder of the soul. Okay, and of the spirit, that's why them fab the wicked Pharisees, they were always offended. And of the joints, it gets right up in your flesh. And of the marrow, the bones. And is a discerner, right? The key thing is a discerner relating to judging, fit for judging, 
skilled in judging decisive okay this word what it searches out what thoughts is a discerner of the thoughts right and the intents so this goes into what a man's intent as well of the heart the act of thinking feeling so it's basically it searches out everything all right so now let's go back to revelations 1 and 14 15 Actually, we're on 16, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. There's a precept for everything. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. So, Yahushua also had what a very, very bright countenance. See if we can find them. Here we go. Ecclesiastes 8. Who is a wise man? And Yahushua was a wise man. The wisest man on earth. Okay. And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? And this ties in with what we first read in Revelations 1 and 4. Blessed is he that readeth. Okay, that's what, because he has the interpretation of a thing. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. So a man, the, the wisdom that a man has, he has a different countenance, a shiny countenance. Okay. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. Okay. So you don't have that same look that you first had when you came into this truth. You look different. Okay. Go back to Revelations. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Revelations 1 and 1 verse. Who is we now? Verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Okay, John, John the Revelator passed out. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth. Remember, because he resurrected and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. I man and have the keys of hell and death. Okay. And that's why it tells you in Revelations, I think it's two or three. I have a key, no more. No man can um, open it, only he can open it. The keys of David, no man can shut it, only Yahweh can shut it. Write the things which I have seen, so this is what was written, and the things which are at that present moment, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mark of the beast, martial law, World War Three. all these things were written by what John the Revelator. Okay, is there anything else? So you know what? I think this was about it. Okay. Ah, you know what? Let's also go into John. We can shut off there. John 14. Go to John 14 and... Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Seven, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. Yahweh shall speak from henceforth. You know him and have seen him because Yahweh shall was a reflection of the heavenly father. So even the heavenly father, one you call God, looks just like his son. The splitting image, Yahweh shall. Or then Yahweh shall wouldn't have said, when you have seen, if you have seen him, you have seen me. It's like a, from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Okay. Because he looks just like his father. Okay. And it's more. Philip saith unto him. Lord show us the father. It shall fight of us. You have shall say unto him. Have I been so long time with you? And yet thou hast not known me Philip. He that have seen me. Have seen the father. How sayest thou then? Show us the father. Right. Believe us not that I am in the father. And the father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So Yahushua was telling Philip, you see me, you're seeing me now. So that means you've seen the Father, because Yahushua was a reflection of his Father on earth. So if people would say, well, how would God look if he had an image? Just like his son. It tells you that in Daniel 7 and 9 as well, it gives you the description of Yahushua, the Ancient of Days. He had a garment, hair. So yes, the one you call God. He has an image. Okay. 
he's sitting on a throne. You don't sit on a throne without a body. It's a, it's, a, it's yes, it's an angelic body. Okay. And when Yahushua comes, he says, I will not meet thee as a man. He's coming as, as an angelic force, but he still has a body. Okay, you can still have a body. Remember, there's two. See, this is going into something else. Talk, scripts talk about celestial and um, extraterrestrial. So there's bodies. Even in the heavens, there's bodies. Okay, you have physical bodies and you have spiritual bodies. But it's still a body. So with this lesson, I hope this was edifying. And until the next time, Shalom.